Sharp angle shot, save, rebounds loose, they score! Keeper Bellows goals in four straight games. What a goal for Oliver Wallstrom, a highlight reel tally, cross ice pass, Wotherspoon scores! Parker Wotherspoon ties the game. This is a production of the Bridgeport Sound Tigers, proud American Hockey League affiliate of the New York Islanders. On for the return pass extended, Simon Holmes from he drag shoots, he scores! First in North America for Simon Holmstrom. I'm head coach Brent Thompson, and this is Sound Tigers Hockey. Hey, the first podcast of 2021 is here. Sound Up returns today, and we've got Sound Tigers forward Mason Yopst on the podcast. I'm Alan Fuhring, and thanks so much for joining us. Well, 2021 has started with a bang in the American Hockey League. Huge news yesterday, less than 24 hours ago, that the American Hockey League is back and that 28 of the 31 teams are in for this season, which I think is a huge win given all of the circumstances, all of the uncertainty that we had and just so many hurdles for the return to play task force to navigate and uh, Boy, out of all of that, 28 of the teams are going to play, which is great. The only three that aren't, uh, tough news for Springfield, Charlotte, and also Milwaukee over in the Western Conference. Those three teams have opted out, and so those three teams will not play in the upcoming season. And uh, we know divisions now. We don't quite yet know how many games the Sound Tigers will play. We don't have a schedule, but we know it's a three-team division. It'll be Bridgeport, Hartford, and Providence, and uh, you want to talk about rivalries, you want to talk about things uh, really heating up fast, well, that's what it's going to be this season. We don't know how many games yet for the Sound Tigers, but we know that half of them will be against Hartford, the in-state rival, and the other half will be against the Providence Bruins. We don't necessarily know that it's a 50-50 split exactly, but I imagine it'll be close to that. And, of course, the three teams opting out. I certainly want to give our well wishes to the families and staffs of those teams. It's so heartbreaking uh, to know that you're not going to play hockey in a season, and uh, it's that's the reality now for those staffs and the Milwaukee Admiral's owner actually coming out yesterday and saying that he is going to pay the full salary for all 19 of his full-time full-time employees uh, for the upcoming season no matter what so that's a, a very generous move now one of the things that we were keeping an eye on in the Pacific Division the brand new team in the AHL the Henderson Silver Knights are in and they are a part of an eight-team Pacific Division it's kind of funny how some of these divisions have uh, almost double or more of uh, teams participating than the Sound Tigers do in the Atlantic, but uh, the Pacific Division has eight teams in it. We've got seven in the North Division when you look at Binghamton, Hershey, Lehigh Valley, Rochester, Syracuse, Utica, and the Wilkes-Barre, Scranton Penguins. There's an all-Canadian team division, and uh, I mentioned 28 teams are in, but they are not necessarily all playing in their home markets. We do have some teams that are relocating for the 2020-2021 season. The most notable of those relocations happens to fall within the Atlantic Division. That's the Providence Bruins, who, because of state restrictions, they won't play in Rhode Island this year. They'll actually be in Marlboro, Mass., where they will play all of their home games. Other relocations include Binghamton, the New Jersey Devils' top affiliate. They'll be in Newark this year. Also, the Ontario Reign are going to play in El Segundo, California, and the San Diego Gulls out west will play in Irvine, California, and they will play at the practice facilities of their NHL affiliates, all aside from the Providence Bruins, who, of course, fall under the Boston umbrella. Again, very exciting news. That's all come down within the past 24 hours from the American Hockey League and and the league offices there. And uh, who better to talk about it than a Sound Tigers player entering his second professional season, Mason Yopst, who's not only our first guest of the new year, which I'm sure is exciting enough, but uh, he's the one who gets to initially break this all down with us. Mason, thanks for joining the podcast. Can you describe the feeling within the last 24 hours of uh, what you've felt as that information has become public? Yes, very exciting. I literally have been on Twitter in the last probably hour and it's been blowing up with the new divisions and the start of the, the season on the fifth. So it's been really exciting. And I mean, it's been so what, nine months, 10 months now. So just to have an end goal is uh, it feels pretty good. I'm sure this isn't something you've ever been a part of before because, you know, the whole world is going through this, this pandemic has been, everything has changed and kind of flipped upside down. 
Well, the American Hockey League, is, as we've talked about, is now uh, starting with 28 teams of the 31 that are back in. Now, a couple teams have opted out. Two of them uh, were initially in the Sound Tigers division. That's Charlotte and Springfield. That means Bridgeport likely will only play two teams this season, and they'll rotate between Providence and Hartford. I mean, obviously that's not something you've gone through before. Most players have never been in that scenario. Your initial reaction to that? Yeah, I don't even know. what That's going to be very interesting. Um, I mean, the smallest league I've probably been in was six teams or so, and it feels like you're playing those guys over and over and over. So I'm sure we'll get to know them pretty well. Film studies will probably be a little bit shorter this time around with playing the same team 20 times each. But – I mean, I'm just happy to get back out there, honestly. Like, however however they got to do it, I'm happy they were able to get stuff together. I know it was probably a ton of work behind the scenes to to get it all done. And it, for a little bit there, I was actually kind of getting worried there may not be an American League season. And it, it's been nine months of training to have no games would have been a dagger. So I'm just very, very thankful that they've done it. You've touched on this a little bit. I mean, what were the initial feelings, you know, when you came across that news? You talk about excitement. You talk about maybe some relief, a mix of a bunch of emotions. What did you feel? Well, yeah. I mean, it's been an emotional roller coaster the last couple of months. I mean, it, I think, what is it, early December, there was a start date way back when that maybe things were going to try to get started in December, which seemed unrealistic at the time. Um, but then it, started getting more in January and he thought it may happen. The NHL was getting going and then they decided to push our season back to February 5th. And I mean, you just have doubts whether things are going to get going. And then finally within the last yeah 24 hours or so to have it all come together was, was pretty exciting and definitely a relief going all the way even back to December and a lot of guys during October when you're supposed to start playing were just sitting idle at home or, or wherever you're residing I mean what what's that process been like for you to try to stay prepared mentally and physically uh it's been a challenge for sure and I'm sure it has been a challenge for a lot of guys and I remember joking around back in like September with some guys saying like oh we've been training for five months and we still have like a whole summer's worth of training left you know we still have three more months and come to find out after that summer was over we still had another three months of training so it's definitely been a grind um it's been fun though you know I've been able to learn a lot about myself and tried to get better in a lot of different ways that I probably wouldn't have um without the virus uh, I've been just trying to take advantage of it and I mean, you got to try to learn and do new things, right? It's been a long time off, and if you just keep doing the same thing over and over and over, you kind of get bored and burned out. So I've tried to make the best of it, and time has finally come to play some games. I'm looking forward to it. Sure, absolutely. And enough about the lockdown and the virus and all of that. Now we know we are playing. It's very exciting, you know, certainly for you guys, but really for the entire Sound Tigers organization. And whether fans are allowed or not to begin with, I know the fans are excited, if nothing else than to, you know, follow you guys from afar and watch on, on AHL TV. And for you, last year was your rookie season, 13 points in 44 games. As you look to build on that here in your second pro year and you reflect on, you know, what went right and what you're trying to work on from last year, what comes to mind? What did you take away from that first season? Yeah, last year was definitely a – Growing pains year. Um, things didn't go quite as I had hoped. Uh, being a rookie was eye-opening. I learned a lot. Um, the coaching staff did everything they could to help me get adapted. Um, it was fun to be around a lot of older guys. You know, when you come from college, you're, you're around a bunch of young guys, and you get to the pro level, and you got guys with kids in the locker room and guys that won Stanley Cups. It's just such a different atmosphere. And I just tried to take everything in that I could it, and make the best of it. Um, I learned a lot and I've had a lot of time to prepare to get ready for my second year. It's so interesting to me that you talk about, you know, coming into a locker room, then you get some guys who have won Stanley Cups and, and guys who have had long NHL careers. One of those guys is Andrew Ladd, and I know you're from Indiana, very close to, to Chicago. You watched a lot of Blackhawks games as a kid, and, uh, you know, I brought this up with other guys before, but, you know, when you're watching a guy in his NHL career for so long, specifically, in this case, Andrew Ladd, who's won a, a handful of Stanley Cups, I mean, when you watch a guy like that, and then all of a sudden you walk into the locker room and he's your teammate, 
how does that open your eyes? Yeah, it's definitely pretty cool. Like getting to training camp too, and just playing with all the guys that you've been watching for so long. And then, uh, when ladder is down with us, yeah, I've been watching. I definitely grew up a Blackhawks fan. So having him down with us was pretty cool. And I just thought the way that he operated was amazing. Um, you know, he was always in the, in the weight room doing all kinds of different things and still trying to get better. Um, definitely on the second half of his career and, you know, he still cares so much and continues to, to work every day and just, you can see why he was so successful in his career, just the little things he does. And uh, that was fun for me to watch and learn and take advantage of. Mason, you're obviously from Indiana, uh, but you ended up going to college in Ohio at Ohio State University, which we'll touch on a little bit more coming up. But, uh, you know, I was reading through your bio on the Buckeyes website. You know, you attended Pittsburgh's development camp. You were in development camp with the Boston Bruins with Minnesota. You ultimately signed a two-year deal with the New York Islanders prior to last season. How did that come about? How did that relationship with the Isles first kind of begin? Yeah, um, I want to say probably my sophomore or junior year, um, Greg Morrow and I had just kind of built a good relationship. And after games, he would come watch and we'd just continue to chat and, and talk here and there. And I thought we had a pretty good relationship. And um, he'd given me some, some stuff on the aisles a couple of years back. So I'd, I had a pretty good relationship, even though I'd been to different uh, development camps. And then when the time came and my senior season came to an end, um, they had already been on my list. And I thought there was a pretty good opportunity with the Isles. And I really liked the staff and the facilities and what they were trying to do on the island. And that's why I jumped aboard. Yeah, no, it's so interesting to me, you know, how different guys come from all over to, to join the organization. I know you and Grant Hutton go back a little bit. To, uh, we've touched on that, you know, uh, quite a bit last season, I feel like. And, uh, you know, another Indiana kid who, who went to college in Ohio. Speaking of Ohio, uh, I assume still a Buckeyes fan for uh, for football. Oh, assuming, oh, yeah. Assuming you watched the, the – was it Cotton Bowl, Sugar Bowl? It was a whooping is what it was. <laughs> <laughs> thoughts on going up against Alabama? Um, thoughts on Bama. Do, does Ohio State have a chance, or are they just sitting ducks? They absolutely have a chance. <laughs> Come on now. Um, but, yeah, a little bit more respect for Bama. Um, I think Dabo was out there talking a little too much, and there was a little extra motivation for the Buckeyes. Yeah. Uh, I, don't th- I don't think Bama's going to be giving them that, that fuel to, to fuel the fire. So should be a good matchup, but definitely underdogs, I would say. Looking forward to that national championship game between uh, Alabama and Ohio State. Uh, Mason, I'm curious, how does a kid from Speedway, Indiana, wind up in the hockey world? Well, I have no family members, aunts, uncles, cousins. No one played hockey, so it was pretty random. Um, My aunt got me a stick and goal from Target when I was like, I think for my – second or third birthday and I just carried it around with me forever and then the next year I ended up getting some skates and would walk around the house until my my ankles were bleeding and really just kind of fell in love with it at a young age without too much thought I always played other sports um but hockey was always number one in in my heart like I loved golf and I played lacrosse and soccer and whatnot but I always knew that hockey was was my dream yeah, and I bring that up because, you know, Speedway, Indiana, home to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, as, as you and I have talked about before, a lot of kids that grow up there, I mean, that's the dream is to one day be involved either as a driver, an owner, or a crew member uh, in IndyCar or in racing. I mean, is that was that something that ever crossed your mind? Is that ever something that you wanted to go into? Or was it always kind of just, you know, I'll enjoy it as a fan because that's the culture around here, but I, I don't necessarily want to pursue it? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I don't think as a kid I ever had any – big dreams of being a a racer. I think those guys that are brought up are surrounded by that environment. Their dads are mechanics or just, you know, are very involved in cars. And I didn't really have that in my family. I have always been super passionate about the race and, and where I'm from and being a race fan. But 
never really had the dream to be a driver. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. And it's kind of, you're on the one side or the other. A lot of people aren't, you know, on, on the fence about which way they want to go. It's either you really want to go into that or you don't. And obviously you chose, you chose wisely going into hockey. You went to Ohio state and to touch on that for the final time, I know you're a pretty humble guy, so I'm not going to you know ask you to read any of this, but you know, going through your bio, I mean, you know, the second ever player for, uh, from Ohio State to earn the Big Ten Medal of Honor, a Hobie Baker finalist your senior year. You're a former uh, co-scoring champion in the Big Ten. I mean, your your accomplishments go on and on. I could uh, I could read these for a while. When you reflect, what do you think back on during your career at, o- at Ohio State? What's one thing that just stands at the top of your mind? Wow, um, fun. <laughs> <laughs> I had I had such a great time at Ohio State. Like everything really just fell into place for me. Um, I'm so grateful for my four years and it was such a great group of guys. I went in with 10 guys in my class, which was so fun. They're all some of my best friends today. Um, We had a lot of success on the ice as well. We won a a big 10 regular season, made it to the frozen four. So winning is always fun and makes the atmosphere so much better. Um, it really was amazing. I got a degree in uh, commercial real estate and urban analysis, which is something that I'd wanted to do previous to college. So the fact that Ohio State had a degree and something I was really looking to um, to do after hockey was was another plus for me. It was just really a perfect storm for me. And a perfect storm is a great way to put it. Hey, more with Mason Yomst after this. First, though, time for our stat of the week. Let me give you a little education, mister. They've done studies, you know, 60% of the time, it works every time. Well, we didn't offer a stat of the week the last couple of podcasts because we had so much content with New York Islanders radio voice Chris King, but we're back at it today. And our stat of the week revolves around the New York Islanders and their training camp, which is actually going on right now over on Long Island. Uh, The NHL starting back up earlier than the AHL uh, coming up later this month, actually only a couple of weeks away. The first New York Islanders game is uh, Thursday, January the 14th against the New York Rangers, but they're preparing for that right now with training camp and our stat of the week is how many games of Sound Tigers experience from just last season alone, so 2019-20 only, are currently on the ice over on Long Island for Islanders training camp. And the answer to that, 429 combined games of Sound Tigers experience from last year alone are over there on Long Island right now. That's divided up between 11 different players, including defenseman Sebastian Ajo. Of course, Thomas Hickey is over there as well. Grant Hutton is a notable name. Also, Parker Watherspoon and Bodie Wild, who was uh, with the Sound Tigers for 20 games a year ago, is over there. Also, goaltender Jakob Skarik, and then forwards Kiefer Bellows, Oliver Wallstrom, Andrew Ladd, Otto Koivula, and Simon Holmstrom hasn't quite joined the team yet because he was with Team Sweden for the World Juniors, but he'll be back over on on Long Island as well, and that's 11 players, 429 games of Sound Tigers experience from just last season for our stat of the week. Hey, our question of the week, which will ultimately translate into our stat of the week, and uh, if you can comment on social media and and perhaps answer correctly, we'll send you a Sound Tigers prize pack. And we're going to go back to January the 4th of 2018, so almost three years ago to the day. And the the question for you guys is, these two players were named to their first American Hockey League All-Star Classics, but neither of them played in that game due to call-ups with the New York Islanders. That's the question of the week. If you know it, uh, go ahead and uh, submit an answer on Facebook or Twitter, and uh, perhaps you'll win a prize pack of the Sound Tigers. Those two players, by the way, still in the organization, so that narrows it down just a little bit and makes it perhaps a little bit easier for you guys. And uh, back on the other side with Mason Yopst here. And uh, Mason, we've had a great chat so far, and obviously we we headlined it with the return of the American Hockey League and the return of the Sound Tigers coming up uh, as close to February the 5th as possible. We still don't know if that date is when the first game will be played, but uh, we know that is the target date, and right around there is when the Sound Tigers will return. Mason will be a part of that group. Have you had any conversation with other teammates or, or coaches through all of this? I mean, is it been pretty much you're isolated and on your own um, obviously physically but as far as being able to reach out have you uh, discussed anything with other teammates yeah I'm actually in a group chat right now with a couple of the guys and, <laughs> there you go it's been buzzing because we just got the big news and who sent the last text uh 
probably Coobs. Oh, okay, that wasn't my guess. Coobs or Hugs. It's it's us in a group talking football, and then big news came out, so we're all pretty fired up to get out there. Yeah, we already got your reaction there in the first half of the podcast, so you know we know what you're feeling, and likely a lot of other guys as well. You know, as we've already talked about, it's going to be Hartford and Providence, the two teams that, that you guys are going to play so much. Likely, you know, in a regular season, you play mostly in the division anyway. There's a couple of games outside the division when you look at Syracuse and Utica and Binghamton and Rochester and all of that. But, I mean, this year it's going to be solely within the division and those two teams. So as we still kind of await to see what the postseason picture is going to look like and what kind of playoff scenario there may or may not be, I mean, I imagine you're going to go into these games thinking every single one of these games is a playoff game because the intensity is going to be right there from the get-go. It's only going to go up and escalate more, and they're all four-point games. Yeah. Yeah, like you said, it's it's going to be such a unique year. It's already been such a unique last year so far, and we're just going to have to figure it out as we go. I'm sure there's going to be changes along the way, and we're going to have to all adapt to that. Um, but yeah, the goal is still to go in, and like you said, I'm not sure about playoffs, but every game will be treated as playoffs. Um, everyone is out there trying to make it to the next level and achieve their dream, and I'm sure it's going to be extremely competitive, and that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, well, that's a great point right there. You know, this this season in particular – it's about you guys, you know, developing and showing what you can do to get to that next level. This year's a weird one. You still want to win, but this is uh, perhaps more so cited on the development side. And as you kind of alluded to, is that mainly going to be what a player's mindset is? I don't know. Everyone's different, right? Um, I think you're going to try to – developing comes with winning, right? You get – as you develop, you start winning more and – I think that's what we'll be looking to do. Um, I can't speak for everyone, but everyone loves to win. And when you're playing the same team 20 times in a row, I'm sure it's going to get chippy and it's going to be extremely competitive. Yeah, I know I like to win, and uh, and I'm not a professional athlete, so I can imagine it's even a little bit more uh, intense for you guys. Uh, we're going to move along to some fan questions. This is always one of my favorite parts of the podcast, uh, mainly because I get to rely on other questions out there. And we're going to start with uh, Brett, who's in Milford, Connecticut. And uh, right off the top, we talked about this is the first podcast of 2021. Very exciting here on January the 5th. New Year's always comes with some resolutions. Did you have one personally? <laughs> um, I usually do come up with some good resolutions in the past. It was so I gave up soda one year and stuck with that for a full year, which was pretty cool. Um, this year I'm still, I'm actually still kind of working on it. I know it's a little past, but I will come up with something. But I'm sorry, I don't have anything right off the top. <laughs> All right, sorry about that, Brett. Uh, we'll, we'll keep working on that. Well, I know a lot of people made resolutions on New Year's Day, which this year fell on a Friday, and then, you know, you don't do well right away. So you say, okay, you know what, I'll just push that back to Monday, and I'm going to start for real on Monday. So you can always give it a week and then start uh, next next Monday. How about uh, your favorite Christmas present? Do you get something you really liked at Christmas this year? Yeah, so I'm out on the uh... – my family farm I've got about 40 acres out here and my parents got me like this little uh this little mini bike this little dirt bike to tool around tool around on out here there you go it was pretty exciting I felt like I was 10 years old again when I walked up <laughs> in the, into the living room be careful with that though because we can't afford any broken bones or anything outside of it goes slow okay good all right yeah you got to be careful with those things uh, I know from experience. So that, that question was from Anna in Stratford. And finally, we've got Jim in Norwalk. Uh, his final question is uh, he kind of follows you online and uh, knows that you're a big fisherman. Can you touch on what kind of fish you, you're going after, the, the success you've had, and maybe how you got into uh, really being a, I don't want to say hardcore fisher, but uh, someone who fishes a lot when they you know, are looking for something to do? I do love fishing, and I'm – I've been going up to Lake of the Woods in Ontario every year for the last 20 years with my family to a little cabin we've got up there and fishing for walleye and muskie and northern pike. Um, so that's where I really got my passion from my grandpa and my 
my pops and, and my family. And, um, in Indy, I like to do just lots of bass fishing and stuff, but moving out, out East and getting in Milford was, was definitely new for me. And catching all those stripers when they were running with the boys was actually probably one of my favorite parts of last season was just spending time with the guys outside and, and fishing and being right on the beach was, it was a blast. It really was. And I'm looking forward to getting back out there again this season. What's the biggest fish you've ever caught? Biggest fish I ever caught. Um, I caught some mahi mahi actually this summer um, down in Miami, which was pretty cool. And then I've got a pretty big muskie this last year uh, up in uh, Lake the Woods. It's my only yeah. one. I always go for muskie, and this is my first one. And Surely you kept it, or those mahi mahi you, you filleted. Yeah, we yeah we did keep the mahi. Yeah, yeah, that's good stuff. Good yeah, fish. Absolutely. Yeah, muskie went back though. Muskie went back. Well, Mason, we uh, we've hit our time allotment for this episode. Thank you very much for joining us. And uh, my my thing is at the end, I like to give uh, you guys the final word and a little bit of a send off. Um, and anything you want to share as we finally you know kind of have some clarity there's still some things that need to be solved but uh you know as we're sitting here in january the 5th we're exactly one month away from the start of hockey final words oh i mean let's just go let's go do that hockey <laughs> there you go you heard, you heard it from mason there uh thanks man i appreciate it and we'll uh, we'll see you soon of course looking forward to it